In this video, we will observe a series of paintings that Varro developed after 1950, which contains the paintings towards the tower, weaving the terrestrial mantle and the escape. For me, these images are not just the story of her flight from her maternal home, but her ability to break out from the numerous intellectual prisons she experienced throughout her life by creating an avenue for her escape. In Towards the Tower, Hacia la Torre, a group of schoolgirls led by the mother superior leave their home to go to work. Their home resemble a beehive, exemplifying their repetitive environment as if they were bred to work and be another exact member of the horde. They appear to be clones of the same individual that in so many ways resemble Vado herself with piercing eyes and vivid red hair. However, as Varro stated in her notes for this painting, this gaze tells the viewer that all of them, except the one driving in the first row, looking straight at the audience, are in a trance that prevents them from changing anything about their situation. Moreover, they are constantly surrounded by a group of black birds, perhaps crows, so they cannot escape. Finally, they are using their needles as their bike handles, as if this object is the one that guides and controls them every step of the way. For her biographer, Janet Kaplan, this image personified when she felt as a schoolgirl forcing her to be the same as everyone else, spellbound by their female societal roles. Yet this could also exemplify her years in the Academy San Fernando or even the Surreal Circle, where they were not allowed to be other than the archetype they represented. As Capla mentioned, during her years in the Academy, her teachers did not leave much more for creative exploration or pursuing their personal style. Instead, they were meant to follow the rules and learn to be masters by copying reality. Similarly, during her time with the Surrealist crowd, although they encouraged experimentation and creative freedom, they created a specific category of what it meant to be an artist and a woman artist. Whoever did not comply with those ideals was immediately disregarded by the club. For me, it is not a coincidence that she was able to produce this vast body of work once Peret returned to Paris, and she was able to explore her own intellectual perspective suits. This idea becomes more apparent in the central panel weaving the terrestrial mantle. In it, Varro highlights the role of the great master, his cloth-covered tall man directing the students while steering a potion and reading a book. The students are then forced to weave the fabric of reality, absorbed in their trance state, unable to think or of anything that was not given to them by this dominant ruler. Still one of them, the same that was awake, and I want to highlight this word, in the last panel is concocting her escape plan, weaving her breakout story into the mantle, visualizing the boat that is about to turn over the edge of the world and lead to a distant land. As I mentioned in the previous video, Varro used the metaphor of weaving and embroidering to exemplify both the coercion exercise on women through this craft and her way of subverting that dominium by using it to create her escape route. In other words, she used the tools given to enslave her to produce her own freedom. You might think I'm stretching my interpretation too far, but I think this is precisely what she did with surrealism. Many of the tools and themes she learned with them, such as frottage and fumage and the study of fantastical and dreamlike realities, enable her to create a new world of her own. Thus, unlike her surrealist counterparts, she didn't use these themes to connect exclusively with her instincts or her subconscious mind, but to build the story about a world she had planned in advance in her mind. Likewise, she didn't use these techniques to produce random or automatic marks and shapes on her canvas, but to complement and enrich the fantastical images she had already created. As we can observe in this painting, she distanced her heroine from the entranced, dormant in individuals around her, living through what they were only experiencing in their dreams. Instead, she produces a reality where she could live, study and create while she was still awake. 
In the last panel, the escape, we observe her herring finally escaping, navigating away from her tower with her lover by her side. It is impo important to note that she was the one that created this lover when she weaved him into the mantle of reality. Hence, she was the one that made her own destiny. Although it might appear that her lover saved her, in reality, she rescued herself. As we studied in the previous video, this story happened many times in her life. First, she created a relationship with Lisa Raga to leave her mother's household and the constraints of the academy. Then she built a relationship with Peret to travel to Paris and then to Mexico to study the world she envisioned. And finally, she constructed her relationship with Gruen, who enabled her to devote herself entirely to her practice. Thus, these men served as leverages, as drivers that helped her direct the, her voyage where she wanted to go and leave the constraints of her previous life. In the painting, we can observe how her heroine is the one steering the vessel and guiding it where it needs to be. The man acts as the sail, holding the fabric attached to the boat to enable the movement through the sands of the desert. In the right-hand corner of the painting, we can observe the couple navigating towards a cave. Many religions and philosophies have used this symbol as a metaphor for the maternal womb, the beginning of life, and the passage every initiate takes towards a different state of consciousness. Again, she used her love story to help her navigate towards the next level of spiritual and artistic development. So where did this cave take her? Did it guide her exclusively to the depths of her dreams and the inner part of her unconscious, which was the reality that she ended up creating? For me, her practice denotes something grander than what surrealist artists envisioned. Her world was not controlled exclusively by her bodily, instinctual nature, nor it rejected the role of science and rationality entirely. In its place, her world envisioned not only the fullness of being a woman, who, was not on, who not only aged, but was in touch with the various parts of her personality, but that allowed humanity in general to blur the lines that distanced and divided the multiple ways of attaining knowledge. In other words, science, art, magic, mysticism, spirituality, physics, astronomy and astrology, among others, were no longer divided but connected and were united to help the human race attain higher knowledge.